اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والحمد للہ الذي جعلنا من المتمسکین بولاية أمير المؤمنين ولائمة المعصومين عليهم السلام والحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يودي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائك بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالصخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we get these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Then we begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhima afdalu salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Would begin many of his sermons by advising us, Usikum ibadallah bi taqwallah. They advise you, O oh, the servants of God, to be God-conscious, God-fearing, and pious human beings. We have been discussing the eighth right, which we will conclude today, inshallah, that is mentioned by our fourth Imam, alayhi salam, is in Haqqul Batan, the right of your stomach. And in the previous khutbah, we talked about one of the obligations that we have when it comes to our stomachs is to not overeat um, and to embrace hunger from time to time. We finish this discussion today um, by addressing um, another obligation that we have when it comes to food and our stomachs and that is to feed others. Um, this is an obligation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us in any circumstance when God has provided something to someone. It is not only for that person's benefit, but it is for them to share that benefit with other people. We get a tradition from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He says, لَيْسَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِي يَشْبَعَ وَجَارُهُ جَائِعٌ إِلَىٰ جَنْبِهِ He says that they are not, that whoever sleeps with a full stomach, but his neighbors are hungry, cannot be called a mu'min, the Prophet says. When we look at the crisis that we face in our world today, um, it is astonishing and it's overwhelming, to be quite honest. Um, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that about 815 million people in the world today, which is about roughly 10.7%, so 10% of the population are suffering from chronic undernourishment. 
right? That means they don't have enough food to survive. And of these, children are the most visible victims of undernourishment. Um, and it is a cause of 3.1 million deaths a year in children. Imagine that, right? Um, I can't get over that number. 3.1 million kids a year die because they don't have adequate food supply. Um, honestly, as a parent, I don't know what I would do if my kid is hungry. And you know, we're very fortunate, alhamdulillah, that we don't have to encounter that, you know. Um, we're very fortunate that here, even though I may be going through poverty, um, I can reach out to food banks, for example, and be granted food. I can go to shelters and get some food. Uh, but there are people throughout the world who don't have anything. Um, and of course, the worst humanitarian crisis that we have in our hands today is what's happening currently in Yemen. Um, the United Nations has estimated that up to 14 million Yemenis, roughly half the population, uh, will suffer severe food shortages within the next few months. And according to the United Nations, half of Yemeni children under five are already chronically malnourished. Right? It says that 400,000 children uh, will likely die within the next few months without intervention. This is happening in our watch. You know? um, and as much as we have, you know, there is a responsibility that we have um, to, to make sure you know, um, that we try to provide. What's interesting is that the same organization, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, says that there is enough food produced in the world today to feed everyone. So it's not like there isn't enough food out there. There is enough food, but most people go hungry, most people go malnourished um, because they don't have either the land to grow the food or they're too poor to buy the food. And so you see, you come back to this root cause uh, again, which is poverty, you know, and uh, there's again, on top of that, a responsibility for you and I who have been provided, alhamdulillah, right, um, to provide. This is why Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam <laughs> Ma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says, Al faqru mawtul akbar. That poverty is the greater death. Yeah? It leads people to do things um, that they wouldn't normally do. Um, and this is an example of poverty that we see in our world today, right? But I think oftentimes uh, what we fail to realize is that this is happening in our own neighborhoods as well. So right here in Mississauga, right here in Brampton, right here in Peel, for example, in particular, um, there are people who are going to go to bed tonight who are hungry. 13% um, of the Canadians live in a state of food insecurity. You wouldn't imagine that, huh? In a country like this, yet 13% of the people um, don't have enough food um, for to eat or they don't have access to safe and good nutritious food. Over the past month, over 850,000 people uh, have turned to food banks for help. This is in the GTA. There's nearly a million people have turned to food banks for help, and nearly one-third of those people are children. Again, you find that children are the most marginalized part um, of our society. Um, and in the last year, the Mississauga Food Bank has recorded an 18% increase in the number of people coming to use their facilities. So right here in Mississauga, which is considered to be a wealthier part of town, isn't it? 18% um, of people, 18% increase in how many people go to food banks to get um, their daily meals. And of course, there's, it all ties back to poverty. There's no doubt about it. But um, in other parts of the world, war, tyranny are all part of the equation. Um, but here in particular, it has to do with poverty. The, the cost of living is going up. The wages are staying the same, and so you find that most people are spending majority of their money on housing um, and on utilities, and then food is, is not on their list of priorities at this moment because where else would they live if they didn't have to pay? Um, and so we have this responsibility. That's what I want to leave with us today. We can all do something. I swear we can all do something, right? Um, and we must do something. It's not that we can. We must do something. Um, it starts, in my opinion, through donating. Right? Donate, donate, donate. As much as you can, donate. God has promised, man. God has promised. You give, I will triple it for you. 
and triple is my word. He says, I will multiply it for you, right? Um, if we have to make certain sacrifices, like if I don't have to drink a Tim Hortons in the morning, and I can just make a cup of coffee and take it to go with me and save that dollar eighty. I think they raised the prices of a medium to a dollar eighty now, right? Uh, if you multiply a dollar eighty by thirty, we have nearly forty bucks. For forty bucks, you can provide someone hearty meals, right? And this is something that I think we need to recognize that we have this huge responsibility being the Khalifas of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. When God said that He is putting a Khalifa on earth, He was not just talking about Adam. He was talking about Insan, all of us. And we are the representatives of God. And so we have to carry out God's work. And this responsibility is both locally and abroad. We get and end with a tradition from our sixth Imam, alayhi afdalu salatu was salam. Muhammad. He says, one of the things which gives one obligatory entrance into paradise and forgiveness is feeding a starving person, right? So we have a means, inshallah, of securing dunya and akhirah when we start looking out to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I hope um, that we will use this opportunity to try and do as much good as we can locally and abroad. We have the capacity to do so. Um, and inshallah, Allah will reward us I'm aptly. Wa akhiru da'awan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahi rahman rahim Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufu wa nahad. Sadaqallahu al-aliyul azim. أعوذ بالله الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي و وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي صل على محمد وعلى محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد We've been talking about mental health and mental illness for the past three weeks and we continue our discussion Last week we talked about specific examples of mental illness um, with anxiety order, disorders, phobias, and schizophrenia. Today I want to talk about another example um, of, mood dis of, uh, of mental illness, and that's mood disorders. Um, and mood disorders are generally broken up into two categories. It's either depression or bipolar. And I'm going to concentrate on depression um, because I feel that that's something that affects 
our communities quite a bit and sometimes we don't recognize the signs of what we are going through. Mid mood disorders are conditions that cause people to feel intense, prolonged emotions that negatively affect their mental well-being, physical health, relationships and behavior. Now, there is no doubt that we all experience from time to time changes in our mood. Right? There will be times when we feel energetic, we feel like doing things, and there are times when I don't feel like getting out of my bed, for example. Um, these are normal. Right? Um, during these times, we may even, uh, if we're talking to a friend or a loved one, we say, I feel down, we would say. I feel depressed, for example. We use that word. Uh, but these moods don't usually long, last very long. Some people within a few hours can recover, some people within a day or so can recover. However, when we talk about depression, depression is something which literally changes the way people think. Um, it changes the way people feel for a prolonged period of time, which affects their entire life. Right? It affects their mood, everything seems down to them. Um, it affects their bodies, it affects their emotions, and it also affects their spirituality where they don't feel like they're connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they feel distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so that adds to their, their feelings, right? It adds to them being continuously down. Um, with some facts or some statistics regarding depression, approximately 8% of adults will experience major depression in some time in their life. <coughs> some time in their life, they will go through a prolonged state of depression. Today, um, and this is in Canada, approximately 5% of male youth and 12% of female youth between the ages of 12 to 9 have experienced a major depressive episode. Right? That's a high number of kids. You find that these mental illnesses that we talk about affect our kids most. Yeah? Um, and we'll talk about that inshallah. And the total number of 12 to, 9, 12 to 19 year olds in Canada at risk of developing depression is at 3.2 million youth. Right? That's the number of kids who are likely to <coughs> undergo depression between the ages of 12 to 19. Now, what causes depression? There are many reasons that cause depression. Um, for example, death or illness of someone will cause someone to feel down. Right? And sometimes if that death of somebody was um, very close to them, it will be a prolonged period where they just don't have the energy of doing something and so they could suffer through a temporary course of depression, especially if it lasts for a prolonged period. Some people have difficulty coming out of that altogether. Um, another cause of depression is difficulty financially. Um, so I don't have, I'm constantly burdened, I don't make enough money, my bills are too high. Um, or it could be difficulties in personal relationships. right? You have, for example, a spouse who is abused at home um, and that spouse doesn't have an escape out and so their entire mindset changes in how they experience the world around them. Um, unexpressed emotional burdens bring about depression. So, for example, you may have a case where there's a single parent and that single parent is supposed to be both the dad and the mom to that kid. Um, and they have to at the same time earn a living and at the same time they have other commitments. And so you find that all of these emotional burdens, um, they keep inside, they, don't, they bottle it in. You know? um, and I think as men, we do that more, we bottle things in, but it's not just men, it's women too, um, who don't want to share their burdens with others and so it takes a toll on them physically. Poor self-esteem causes that and this is something that is tied in with uh, one other point that I'll make up, some of that has to do with genetic predisposition. So it's passed on genetically um, or some type of physical stress. But the last one that I want to concentrate that ties into poor self-esteem is loneliness. Loneliness is one of the major reasons why people will undergo depression. Um, and this loneliness affects two groups of people the most. One is our seniors um, and one is, is children, youth. Um, with our seniors in particular, we can understand why they go through depression. Um, and we're all kind of responsible for this, right? They, they, know they are no longer working, for example. And so they don't have this daily outlet of where to go, what to do. We're, alhamdulillah, blessed in a way where we have this jama'ah congregation. 
where we meet at least once or twice a week if you decide to come out on Thursday nights as well. And that gathering does bring a little bit of ruhani, does bring a little bit of light, does bring a little bit of inspiration. And that's something that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are many people who don't come out. Now, if you add and compound into that, that they don't drive anymore, for example. Right? And their children are working somewhere far so their kids can't bring them to mosque. Um, these are real things. Honest to God, real things that we need to think about of what we can do better uh, for those people who, who built this mosque for us, basically. Right? Who we are living off of and enjoying. The second category is youth. Is youth. You see, we've talked about this when we talked about social media. That today, the youth group, um, and this is not the millennial generation, this is Generation Z, right? Um, they are the most connected generation ever, right? They're connected with all of their friends, they're connected with everybody because of their gadgets and all their IT knowledge. But at the same time, they are the most lonely generation ever because they don't go out anymore. They just sit at home and they speak to everyone, but they don't have the skills to go out or don't have the, the, the energy to go out. Um, and you find then that they, that's why there's such a large number of them who are going depression, who are undergoing depression. And these things um, we need to address, especially if we have kids. Uh, we need to make sure that our kids see light outside. You know, that they go out, that we, and we talked about all of this in social media, so I don't want to again repeat this. Now, what are the signs of depression? Um, there are many signs of depression. And again, like, we'll talk about this in the end. Don't freak out, right? Like, don't panic. Um, but if you have these signs, you got to talk about it, okay? Um, your feeling of despair or hopelessness. That's one sign where, um, you feel like you're drowning, basically. You have this big rock on your chest and you can't just seem to get out of this rut that you're in. Continued fatigue or loss of energy, persistent or recurring headaches, ongoing disturbances in sleep, that means you don't sleep well, becoming withdrawn, lacking enthusiasm or lacking feelings of enjoyment, sadness and crying for no apparent reason, inability to concentrate or make decisions, loss of interest in usual activities. You don't even feel like going to mosque. You don't feel like getting ready to go to mosque. You don't feel like doing any of these things. Um, and the greatest or the most dangerous sign of depression is thoughts of suicide, right? And that's what we're gonna talk about next week is suicide and the number of suicide cases that we see in our society. And we're not immune from that. Um, I know that at this time, I'm not offering solutions. I recognize that. I'm, I'm, what I am intentionally doing is, is, is talking about this so that we can feel comfortable talking about this. Um, right now, as I'm reciting this, I know it's not comfortable for some people, right? Um, but right now, it's the time to just bring awareness to this issue. We said this is going to be a prolonged subject. Inshallah, in two weeks, we'll start addressing of how to fix this. Um, but it's, it's time. It's time for us to look within ourselves. It's time for us to look within our loved ones who we feel that they're not the same, right? This is not the same child I had before. Something's off. And like, a lot of times we, we chalk it up to, well, it's just hormones. They're growing up, right? But we got to make sure that we sure, we're sure of that. What's the underlying causes? What's happening? Talk to them. We don't talk anymore, right? Um, and we don't have to become paranoid either. I don't want us to go to extremes here. I don't want us to become paranoid, but I don't want us to ignore this anymore either. Um, but it's time to talk about it, right? And it's time to address it. Um, and I'm hopeful, inshallah, that these discussions will bring about more light to this issue so that you can go home and say, Sheikh said this today. Let's talk about this a little bit. And talk, 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 talk. Sometimes when a person is just going through um, bouts of depression, for example, all they need is someone to listen to them. All they need is someone to understand them, not judge them, but talk to them, listen to them. Um, and inshallah, we can, we can help people who are undergoing this. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahi rahman rahim Wa la asri inna linsana lafi khusr. Illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haq. 
وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم